The average age of the uh, fleet, let's say in the United States, is like um, probably four or five years and some 10 years. Right. So a lot of people keep their car for 10 years. So think of that and then think about this idea of how often can you uh, upgrade everything and everyone get to autonomous, it'll be a while. I've got Jeff Jury, the general manager of automotive at Xperi. How are you, Jeff? Good, how are you? I'm great. You know, when we're talking about Mobile World Congress, I'm thinking mobile devices, right. but there, very few people would think of automobiles as mobile right. devices, but they're the ultimate mobile devices, right? That's right. What are some of the major trends you're seeing this year? Well, let me say, first of all, to your point, when you think of the car, really it's a big cell phone on wheels, right? Mm -hmm. You can do everything you can do in a phone, you can do in a car, although there are some fundamental differences. And some of them have to do with safety and also with how much data you can put through a vehicle compared right. to a phone, where you can do a lot with a, with a vehicle. So you see a lot of the trends at shows like this where they talk about the throughput, how to get the capacity into the vehicle, all the different services you can offer that really link a digital life into the vehicle so it's very seamless. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at how to make the car smarter, yeah, just like a smartphone, Correct. how to optimize the use of cars, but also how to make cars make our lives more convenient and more efficient. And that comes with autonomous driving. Right, and you see uh, there's some advertisements of companies. I don't believe they have a booth here, but Boynton that has a new car that's okay. really about the digital life. And you see some of the other uh, companies here, like Mercedes, which is showing some of their new uh, uh, dash screens. Mm -hmm. And you can see that it's really about creating a better experience for the consumer mm -hmm. and doing something, and creating something where the consumer has, sees it's fun to do and play with the dash and customize it for what they want to use it for. And that customization is something you'll probably see more and more where, where you want the controls. As long as the relevant, important information is being displayed, you may be able to move that around some. And your entertainment options you can bring up in a different way based on what you want to listen to or what you want to use while you're driving or a passenger in the vehicle. Now being a resident expert on auto here, do you feel like consumers are asking for more, more customization or is it just companies giving more customization? I think it's a combination, it's a good question. I think with all these trends, you've got some uh, tech leaders and some consumers that really want to do it. And then the question is how widely does it get adopted by the average consumer? And I think with cars, unlike phones, you may see a longer tail on some of the more traditional systems because when people are driving a car, a lot of times they want that car to look exactly like it's looked for years and years and years. Right. And I'll go back to what I said uh, at the beginning, safety is very important. So whatever you do in the vehicle, it has to be done in a way that's safe. The more autonomy you have, the more safer it'll be. So a lot of these features go hand in hand with increased autonomy in the vehicle. And when we're looking at autonomous cars, right now we're probably at like a level two or a level three. When do you think we're gonna to get to like that full level of autonomous driving? I think it's gonna be a while. Yeah. I think you'll see autonomy come in. But if you think of cars, unlike phones, phones generation year to year, there's dramatic changes generation. So by the time you get three or four years down the road, a phone from four years ago doesn't look very similar to a phone now in terms of features. Right. Cars are planned out in four year cycles. So the cars that are on the road now were designed four years ago. So what's being worked on now is cars that are coming four years in the future. So you have a certain amount of built-in lag. So when you talk about autonomy at that level, you're multiple generations away from it. That doesn't mean we won't have autonomous vehicles on the road. It doesn't mean we won't have autonomy year over year increasing but it's really gonna take a long time until you have a complete autonomous, let's say, universe out there. Right. Just because cars take a while to, uh, to establish out there in the marketplace. Plus, um, I don't know the actual statistic for a phone, but very few people have five-year-old phones. Right. A few do, most don't. The average age of the uh, fleet, let's say, in the United States is like um, probably four or five years and some 10 years. Right. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people keep their car for 10 years. So think of that and then think about this idea of how often can you uh, upgrade everything and everyone get to autonomous, it'll be a while. 
But that also way. the infrastructure has to be there too. Right. There could be fully autonomous cars, but we don't have the infrastructure there That's out right. on the streets so And you see that right now with, I think what comes before autonomy is electrification. Mm -hmm. So you see a lot of hybrid and electric cars. And even with electric cars, you have to have uh, the infrastructure for that. Mm -hmm. One of the great things about driving, let's say, across the United States, if, uh, to use that as an example, is you know you get gas everywhere, right? Yeah. There's gas stations on every corner. But when you go to something that's a new power source, you've got to make sure that infrastructure is in place. Exactly. So play that out across autonomy, play that out across making sure that car has connectivity wherever you go. Uh, you'll have that connectivity in urban centers, but uh, in certain, particularly North America, in parts of China, uh, you have a lot of suburban driving. Driving, you have a, 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 a trying to cover a long distances. Mm. And so to say you're going to have complete infrastructure in really is going to take a while. How is Xperia taking the lead when it comes to auto and technology? Yeah, so we have a number of different technologies we're deploying into the vehicle, but really it's about driving connectivity so, uh, into the vehicle and uh, creating new uh, capabilities for our partners or the car companies. So be it connected radio or even our DMS or driver monitoring systems. There's a number of things we're doing now to deploy technologies today and in the future to enable a broader and deeper, richer uh, consumer experience in the vehicle with either audio or uh, imaging. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, we work a lot now with uh, digital radio platforms around the world for deploying either HD radio or connected radio. You say, well, radio, that's an old technology. But when you digitize it, you create a bigger data pipe and you can do more into the vehicle. Our DMS capability where we're able to monitor the driver, use that information, play that information back into the cloud for other uh, uses with a car company. This connectivity allows you to do things in a safety space, in an entertainment space that you didn't do before. And so we can create better uh, experiences for the consumer and create uh, some compelling offerings for car companies that they want to work with us because we're bringing something to the party that others aren't. Have you had a chance to walk around at a little all? Bit. Have you seen anything that just blew your mind? I think if you go to, um, on the car side, if you go to like the Mercedes booth and you see uh, some of their new uh, user uh, screens and how yeah. they're deploying that technology is very innovative. It looks very much like a phone. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got a lot of great ways to do some customization. I think some of the, uh, the, the companies like the uh, Intels and Qualcomm's, yeah. they talk a lot about smart cars mm -hmm. and you see of all the things they believe that they can put into the vehicle. Uh, a lot of it is with cloud-based information yeah. and the key is to put very high end processors in the car that enable them to do much more than you can do uh, in the car today. And it goes to this, the original uh, theme where we started talking about uh, the car being an extension of the phone, an extension of yourself. And all this requires throughput and power and computing power in the vehicle. So you see a lot of the chip companies talking about that. I've seen some concept cars where the chairs aren't even facing the road, they're facing yeah, each yes, other. Right. So I kind of want that, but that, more of a massage chair. Yeah. You know, get a massage while my car is driving for me. You enjoy driving. I don't enjoy you driving. Don't enjoy driving so I would like for it to drive for me, but at the same time well, do my laundry. One thing we have in common is we want that to be a great experience. We want to get in the car and look forward to getting the car. Yeah. And I think that's what you'll see in the future is this idea that instead of people getting the, chore, the car as a chore to get somewhere, yeah. they get in the car and they enjoy that experience. For what, however they want to customize it, mm -hmm. it's enjoying that experience. And honestly, L.A. traffic, there's nothing we can do about it. So we might as well enjoy our time enjoy in our time. vehicles while sitting in that right. traffic. Immerse yourself in a new audio experience. We do some of that technology. Uh, do some other things with content that maybe you couldn't do. Learn what's going on. Try out some new music formats on different radio stations. Or maybe bring some content in and listen to an e-book. Or watch a movie with, with automation. There's a lot you can do to enrich yourself as a consumer in an automated uh, space that people don't think of today. And if you're like me, you still want to drive, you still have that option to drive with some additional safety features. All right, thank you so much, Jeff. Thank Appreciate you. It.